On the Barron's Roundtable, my colleagues Ben Levison, Carl English, and Jack Howe. Uh, ben, speaking of questions, the Dow just snapped a four-week losing streak. Did people just get tired of selling, or is there good news that I didn't notice? Well, I think, as Jack likes to tell us, the stock market goes up, what, 80% of the time. Guess up. Usually I guess up. <laughs> yeah. So it goes up 80% of the time. And this is one of those times where the market had been falling. It hit a technical level, a 200-day moving average, and it started to bounce. And this was despite the fact that we had a Fed governor come out and tell us, you know what? I think we need rates to go even higher. And yields following him higher. Um, we had the two-year hit almost 5%. The 10-year went over 4% for the first time since November. But everything kept going up. Tech stocks kept winning. They were the only sector that was uh, positive in February. And the only thing that acted as they should have was utilities, which fell 0.8% on the week. They were the worst performer. Uh, they tend to fall because their dividends are, you know, don't look as good when yields are rising. And the inverted yield curve is an old story, but it's getting even more inverted. If that that's it is mathematically possible. Uh, so if rates keep on rising, can investors keep on smiling or what do you see? I think they can. Um, there's a, a strategist I've been following, uh, Barry Bannister over at Stiefel. And back in October, he predicted that we were going to get a six-month rally that would uh, go, the market would go up about 15 percent. It would end in April at around 4,300. And uh, he put out a note on Friday saying that, that he still believes that's going to happen. I think he's absolutely right. Um, you, you don't have to like the stock market to uh, think that it's going to go up. And, and he's in that camp. He thinks we're in a secular bear market, but it means that you do get these moves of, you know, 15 to 20 percent uh, in both directions happening all the time, and you have to take advantage of them. And that's kind of what we're in right now. He's worried about uh, what comes next, what comes uh, in September. But uh, for now, uh, we have more upside ahead. Cyclical bull and a secular bear. Yep. Alrighty. So um, next week, uh, next two weeks, actually, we've got a lot of data coming out, but next week is the, the jobs numbers coming out. Is there anything you see that could kind of uh, end the Bannister rally, if we call it? Well, I think if it's too hot, and we've had a very uh, strong jobs report in January, we're not going to get a report like that. But if it is too hot, that can knock things down again. But we're looking at 200,000. If it's around that level, I think the market's fine. All righty. Uh, so, Jack, uh, there's a, something called an investor day. It has yeah. a certain purpose. Uh, apparently, Tesla did not get that message. You don't have to have one, by the way. You can go <laughs> without them. And, and they did, you know, during the, the 10 years that went through 2021, uh, uh, the, the stock went up, you know, 18,000 percent. You don't need an investor day if your stock has gone up like that. Um, but, but the stock, uh, you know, was a wreck last year. And so they announced an investor day. The purpose of an investor day is you cheer your technology, your strategy. It didn't go well. The stock fell 6%. Investors wanted to hear about a new, uh, you know, lower cost car, maybe a twenty-five dollars or $30,000 car. They didn't get details on that. The company did say they'll bring production uh, costs down by half. That's that's a big deal. There were a lot of details on robots. E Elon Musk said, he, he said, uh, you know, I, I, th I think we, we might exceed a one-to-one -one ratio of robots to humans eventually. That's how smart people say they're going to outnumber us at some point. So there's that. But there were more questions than answers on a lot of stuff. One analyst, um, you know, called said details were limited. Another said short on specifics. One called a letdown. So um, it didn't really go their way. I mean, the, the last one of these that they had, it was, it was 2000. They, they, this was part of their new master plan three. The last time they announced a master plan was 2016. Back then they said, we're going to have this future of robo taxis. We don't have those yet. I'm wondering if the robots will carry me out to my robo taxi when it all comes together, but that's where we're at. Okay, bottom line at two two months ago, Al Root on the show said Tesla goes up. It has gone up 77% since then. Is this the end of that rally? You know, Adam Jonas has this very complicated some of the parts, and he, he says the stock's going up to 220 bucks. It's about 15% more. It's so difficult to tell. There's one prognosticator who less than three years ago said the stock price is too high. And then last October, he said Tesla is going to be worth more than Apple and Saudi Aramco put together. They're over $4 trillion. The stock would have to multiply seven times. That guy runs the company. His name is Elon Musk, and he's <laughs> all over the place. 420. All righty. Uh, let's talk about another investor day, Carlton. This one didn't go so well either at Goldman Sachs. I mean, in terms of market day performance, a little bit better than Tesla. Goldman shed about 3.8 percent that day. But again, you have questions about strategy. Uh, there are parts of Goldman's business that are very strong. That would be their investment banking and asset and wealth management. Yes, you can talk about some of the macroeconomic concerns that are hurting those businesses now, but that's across the board. What is hurting Goldman is its foray into con the consumer business. 
business. And those are businesses that really don't belong in Goldman Sachs. And Goldman said, or David Solomon, their chief executive, said, hey, we're looking at strategic alternatives for those businesses. That is a very loaded term on the street. But then in the same breath, they said, we also want them to break even by 2025. Wall Street's left wondering, which is it? And both options aren't really that great. You guys got to get a handle on what you want Goldman Sachs to be. If it makes money, maybe you can sell it for more. Uh, explain this Barron's headline. It said, from vampire squid to mediocrity. Well, and that's exactly the case. I mean, for the longest time, Goldman was both admired and criticized for its ability to make money in any market. And right now, they're not looking like the big guy on Wall Street anymore. Right now, that title is probably going to Morgan Stanley. You're saying they're aspiring to squid at this point? <laughs> They're aspiring to calamari. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, almost out of time, but the, the the famous trade on Goldman is you buy when it falls below book value. Sounds like we should keep waiting. I think keep waiting. Um, I would say look to the next two quarters and make sure that they get a handle on this consumer business before going in. You will have plenty of chances to go in. All righty.